The Plymouth Belvedere is an American automobile model that was produced by Plymouth from 1954 to 1970. 1951 a Euro 1953 Plymouth Cranbrook Belvedere, introduced on March 31, the 1951 Plymouth Cranbrook Belvedere is a two-door pillarless hardtop. It was Plymouth's first such body design and was introduced in response to the 1950 Chevrolet Bel Air, the first two-door hardtop in the low-priced American market. The Cranbrook Belvedere was not a separate model, but the name for the two-door hardtop version of the Cranbrook and built on the same 118.5 in wheelbase. Powering the Belvedere is a flathead 217.8 cubic inches straight six engine with a 7.00 to 1 compression ratio producing 97 horsepower. For 1952, Plymouth kept the Cranbrook Belvedere largely unchanged. The biggest alteration was to the color scheme. To further distinguish the top-level Belvedere from other Plymouths, the two toning now flowed from the roof over the belt line onto the trunk, which has been referred to as the saddleback treatment. Two-tone color schemes were sable bronze over suede, black over mint green, and gray over blue. Overdrive was made available as optional equipment in the 1952 Plymouth. In overdrive, the engine made three revolutions for each rear wheel revolution against four without overdrive. The engine was a complete carryover from 1951. Prices, however, did increase by about $100 US to $2,216. Production for 1951 and 1952 totaled 51,266 units, which was slightly better than a quarter of Chevrolet Bel Air and Ford Victoria production for that same period. There has never been a separate breakout for Plymouth production figures for the Korean War era years of 1951 Euro 52. The Belvedere remained a part of the Cranbrook series through 1953. For that year, all Plymouth models were completely restyled. Major style changes include a shorter 114 in wheelbase, a one-piece windshield, flush rear fenders, and a lower hood line. In April 1953, Plymouth's received the HY Drive semi-automatic transmission. Again, Plymouth was behind the competition with Chevrolet having introduced the fully automatic, power glide, transmission in 1950, with Ford following the next year with its fully automatic, Ford-O-Matic, transmission. The engine was carried over from 1952 with the only enhancement being a slight increase in the compression ratio to 7.10 to 1 which yielded a rating of 100 horsepower. The shorter wheelbase partly led to an overall stubby appearance that was panned by consumers and critics. Even with a reduced starting price of $2,132, demand was low. A total of 35,185 1953 Belvedere's were sold. 1954, the Belvedere replaced the Cranbrook as the top-line offering for 1954. Now, a separate model instead of just a two-door hard-top coupe, a buyer could choose a convertible, two-door station wagon, four-door sedan or the aforementioned two-door hard-top, now called the sport coupe. Minor styling updates adorned the carryover body design. For the first time, small chrome tail fins appeared on the rear fenders. In March 1954, Plymouth finally offered a fully automatic transmission the Chrysler Corporation's well-regarded power flight two-speed. Also new was a larger standard engine, a 230.2 cubic inches I-6 that was also used by the Dodge division. Power was now rated at 110 horsepower Belvedere production slipped to 32,492 for the year. 1955 a Euro 1956, all Plymouths were treated to a major overhaul for the 1955 model year. This was the first year of Chrysler stylist Virgil Kschner's Ford look. The Belvedere returned as top of the line. For 1956, Plymouth styling evolved from that of the 1955s. Most notable would be the introduction of the first push-button automatic transmission to appear in an American automobile, and a more dramatic rear-end treatment highlighted by a pair of rakish tail fins. In early 1956, the Fury joined the Belvedere line as a special edition high-performance model. In 1956, Plymouth added seat belts. After the Fury was expanded to become Plymouth's top model in 1956, 
the Belvedere was demoted as the middle-priced model after the Plaza and Savoy. In 1956, Chrysler in a public relations campaign took a Belvedere and had turbine engine fitted instead of the standard gasoline engine, and was driven across the U.S. 1957 Euro 1959, the 1957 model year had high sales for the Chrysler Corporation, and for the Plymouth line. Plymouth's design was so revolutionary that Chrysler used the slogan suddenly, it's 1960, to promote the new car. The Belvedere line once again included the Fury. This year a new 277,309 320ths in 3V8 with dual full-barrel carburetors was the standard engine in the Fury, and it was available on all Plymouths. The Belvedere would once again return as a top-level trim for 1958. Styling was a continuation from the sleek 1957 models. A big block B engine of 350 and 3 V8 with dual full-barrel carburetors dubbed Golden Commando was optional on all models. The convertible was only available in the Belvedere model between 1956 and 1958. The 1958 Belvedere two-door hardtop gained notoriety from the Stephen King movie Christine. Christine was billed as a 58 Fury, but lacked the buckskin beige paint and gold trim that was standard on all Furies that year. Instead it sported Belvedere trim and was painted Toreador red with an iceberg white top. Plymouth collectors decried the cars that were destroyed or cut up in the making of the film. However it did give new life to the remaining Plymouths, shooting the value of the cars upward to many times their original worth. 1960 Euro 1961, starting in 1960, Belvedere's got a brand new standard inline six-cylinder engine. Colloquially known as the Slant 6, it displaced 225 cubic inches, featured overhead valves, and a block that was inclined 30 degrees to the right to permit a lower hood line with maximum displacement. This engine used a single-barrel Holly carburetor, and became known for its extremely rugged construction, exceptional reliability and longevity. In 1961, most beholders would agree. It was hit with the ugly stick. 1962 Euro 1964, the 1962 model year full-size Plymouths were downsized, with more compact outside dimensions. American car buyers at the time were in the thought mode of bigger is better, and sales of these models suffered. However, the smaller Plymouth provided greater owner approval in their actual use. A Plymouth Belvedere with six-cylinder engine and automatic transmission was compared to the intermediate-size Ford Fairlon and the compact-size Chevrolet Chevy 2 in an economy test by Popular Mechanics and the road test concluded that the Belvedere was a very pleasant transportation package. Another advantage of the smaller and lighter body was in drag racing. The 1963 and 1964 models used the same unibody platform as the 1962s, but were restyled to look longer and wider. The 1964 Belvedere featured a new slant back roof lint that proved to be popular, and sales improved significantly over the previous design. The 1964 Belvedere was also the car used to introduce the 426 Chrysler Hemi engine, which used a canted large valve arrangement. This was such a significant high RPM breathing improvement that Hemi equipped Plymouth Belvedere's one first, second, and third at NASCAR's 1964 Daytona race. One of the winning drivers was Richard Petty. 1965 a Euro 1967, in 1965 Plymouth once again made the Fury a full-sized car, and Belvedere became the intermediate size offering. The 1968 television show Adam 12 featured a 1967 model black and white Belvedere as the standard Los Angeles police cruiser. 1968 Euro 1970, the Plymouth GTX was introduced as the top of the line Belvedere, and Richard Petty won the Grand National Championship in NASCAR in a Belvedere. The new LA style lightweight 318 engine was introduced for this year and would remain available on the Belvedere through its life. In 1968, the line was restyled with a roof lint changed to follow the Charger, standard flip out rear quarter windows, and Coke bottle styling. The Belvedere name was dropped at the end of the 1970 model year, replaced by the Plymouth satellite name originally reserved for higher-end Belvedere's. The satellite itself lasted only through 1974. 
Starting in 1975, the car was renamed Plymouth Fury, and the longer wheelbase Plymouth Fury became the Grand Fury. Engines, note, there are some discrepancies in this section referring to the term Hemi. 340 engines were not Hemis and the Hemi was first put into production and performance use as early as 1951, not in the late 60s as the last paragraph suggests. For more info on the Hemi C Chrysler Hemi engine. Equals old style 277303-318A engines equals, these engines were manufactured from 1955 to 1966, and the newer LA engines were introduced in 1967 running all the way till 1992. These engines have led to a lot of confusion with the inclusion of the 273 to 318, 340 to 360 LA engines, also referred to as A engines. The old style A engine was introduced as a 277 Psi engine with 187 horsepower as standard. The 301 318 engines were introduced in 1957. The 318 two barrel carp had 230 horsepower, while the 318 four barrel had 260 horsepower. In the 57, there was a four barrel 318 performance package that had 290 horsepower, being the largest output for stock A engines. As with the vintage the Polisphere was not the choice for hot rodders because the lack of support for performance parts such as headers, cams, intake manifolds, and cylinder heads that were widely available for the 318 LA, and the 340-360 engines. Hence the confusion where old car enthusiasts refer to the 1967 as being the A style, which is incorrect if looking at Chrysler's engine history. Equals new style 273,340-360 LA engines equals, the 273 was introduced mid-year in 1964 with a two-barrel 180 horsepower, 1965 saw a four-barrel 235 horsepower with performance camshaft, 1966 saw a limited production of the 273 with dual exhaust, steel headers, a 700 CFM holly carb, and a 0.500 lift performance camshaft making 275 horsepower. Installation was only in 50 specially equipped Dodge Darts designed specifically for NHRAD stock drag racing, the car was tagged D-Dart. In 1967, the new style 318 was introduced with a two-barrel carb and was not meant to be a performance engine. This engine was a big perversion of the 273 and used the latest lightweight casting technology found in the 273. A 318 four-barrel version was introduced in 1978 after a period of 10 years of having the 318 ship with a two-barrel. The 318 LA was replaced after 1991 with the introduction of the 1992 5.2L Magnum. The 340 was introduced in 1968 and began to build what was one of the most popular and best small block V8 engines. The 340 had high flow cylinder heads and a 180 a degree, two level intake manifold. The 340 reached its highest stock performance peak in 1970 with a three two barrel carburetor package and featured a thick web block, specially machined cylinder heads, adjustable rocker arms and special intake manifold and carbs. In 1972, the 340 was bumped down in compression from 10.41 to an emissions-friendly 8.51 and shortly thereafter we had the 1973 oil crisis. The 360 was introduced in 1971 with a two-barrel carb and a 9 to 1 compression ratio. After the 340 was discontinued in 1973, Many of the 340 parts were installed on the newer 360 and continued with the 340's performance heritage. With the discontinuance of the B&RB engines after 1978, the 360 U58 became the highest output Chrysler VB8 for 1979 and 1980. Australian Production The Plymouth Belvedere was also produced by Chrysler Australia. The first model, based on the 1953 US Plymouth, featured a high level of Australian content, with body panels pressed in Chrysler Australia's Keswick facility in South Australia and matched with a 217.8 cubic inch side valve six-cylinder engine, imported from Chrysler UK. 
it was produced as a four-door sedan and as a locally developed two-door coupe utility, along with similar Cranbrook and Savoy models, until it was replaced by the Chrysler Royal in 1957. The Belvedere was reintroduced to the Australian markets in early 1958 when Chrysler Australia began assembling the current model Belvedere four-door hardtop which was imported from the US in knockdown form. The 1959 model was equipped with a 318 cubic inch V8 engine and push button automatic transmission. Chrysler Australia replaced their Plymouth Belvedere, Dodge Custom Royal, and DeSoto Fire Sweep models with the Dodge Phoenix in 1960. Oklahoma Centennial During Oklahoma's 50th anniversary, a new 1957 Plymouth Belvedere was sealed in a concrete enclosure as a time capsule near downtown Tulsa. It was unearthed June 14, 2007 during the state centennial celebrations, and was publicly unveiled on June 15. In line with the Cold War realities of late 1950s America, the concrete enclosure was advertised as having been built to withstand a nuclear attack. The concrete enclosure, however, was not airtight and allowed water to leak in, which caused significant damage to the vehicle. The controversial televised vehicle customizer Boyd Coddington was to have been the first to start the unburied car, had it been operable. The car was the prize of a 1957 contest to guess the population of Tulsa in the year 2007. The winning entrant, one Raymond Humbertson, guessed 384,743 versus the actual figure of 382,457. However, Humbertson died in 1979 and now only distant relatives remain. A second such car, this one a brand new Plymouth Prowler, was encased in an above-ground vault in 1998 to celebrate the city's centennial. It is to be revealed after the same period of time as the Belvedere, in 2048. Notes External links, Olpa, Plymouth Satellite, Plymouth GTX, and Plymouth Belvedere View the unburied Plymouth Belvedere, Plymouth Belvedere in television and film, Plymouth sales brochures at www.oldcarbrochures.com.